those days so long ago now when skies were turning Nineteen forty two was a drab year. People needed any lift to the spirit that colour and flowers could give. The worst of the Blitz was over, but the war dragged on with no apparent end in sight. At Chilton, Harry Dodson has assured the survival of the herbaceous border by planting vegetables among the flowers. Producers at the BBC used comedy sketches to make wartime recipes more palatable. The Buggins family, popular from pre-war radio, were enlisted. I know. I'll make a Connaught pie. Another disguise for parsnips. Joyce, now. Ruth Mott and her evacuee Joyce tune in to the kitchen front. Five ounces of flake oats. A pint of water. Uh, there's one thing I ain't rationed yet. <laughs> so, Grandma, you'll make me lose my thread. Where was I? Five ounces of flaked oats and a pint of water. Then there's half a leek, one teaspoonful of mixed herbs and one teaspoonful of salt, two ounces of leftover meat cut in slices, two ounces of cheese and one pint of sauce. What kind of sauce? Well, you make it with three ounces of national flour and a pint of vegetable stock or water and the two ounces of cheese. Sounds all right. What are you going to do with that lot? Well, you put your flaked oat and the leeks and the seasoning and the mixed herbs and the water in a pan and bring it to the boil. Boil it till it's thick, 20 to 30 minutes. Then you turn it onto a flat plate and let it cool. When it's cold, cut it into small shapes and sandwich the cold meat in between the shapes. Then you arrange them in a flat dish and pour the cheese sauce over. You grill it or brown it in the oven. That sounds very tasty. Very tasty indeed. If you like to make all that fuss over Maria, I wouldn't. Besides, it might tempt her to stay if your cooking's too good. Don't do to cook too well. That's what made Louisa Nutbutton's husband marry her. She said to me time and again with tears in her eyes. I'm afraid, Clara, she says that Henry only married me for my cooking. Oh, this is taking rather more growing material than I thought for in the beginning, Ernie. Yeah. The government valued the vitamin content of tomatoes. In the English climate, their outdoor season is short and unreliable, so every available glasshouse space was requisitioned. With the flowers gone, Harry must somehow convert the staging to carry a crop of tomatoes. The two walls of the uh, well-rotted manure is placed to like this and uh, in the middle of the uh, manure is placed the loam and the loam is firmed fairly firm otherwise you just get a soft lanky growth of the tomatoes but the real idea of the tomato walls is to keep the loam together okay. and you will be able to keep uh, the moisture in better than you would if it was just a mound of loam the Ministry of Food was worried that shortages of fresh fruit and vegetables might lead to vitamin deficiencies, particularly among children. Hi, natives. This is your chin-up boy to tell you. Charlie, there was something I wanted to tell you. Yes, then? Oh, I, I made a note on my cuff. Yes? Let's see. Uh, children under five need protection from illness. I quite agree. And they also need good health. Yes. And if you need a thing... Then you have to fish for it, don't you, though? Yes, sir. Fish. Fish. Cod. Cod. 
Cod liver oil. Cod liver oil. It's a fine thing. Yes, then, they do say that it builds uh, good, strong teeth and bones. And good bones mean good support. Yes. As he support. A, a man supports his bride. Exactly. Uh, bride. Bride. That's it. They give it away. Free. Cod liver oil, rich in vitamins A and D, was made available to all children under five. Good for them though it was, it was no fun to take. Can you stop a minute now, because I've got your medicine for you. I suppose it did make up for a deficiency, really, but it was getting it down little children's necks that right. was the problem. Open wide. Well, it tasted so horrible, didn't it? It was like neat fish going down. No, I don't like it. What's the matter with it? I don't like it. Much more fun was the chance to play in the rubble of a bomb site or to have a go at growing vegetables. The shortage of seeds in the shops made a gift from America particularly welcome. But some of the vegetables were unfamiliar to the British gardener, like squash and sweet corn, while others had horticultural problems. I think some of the lettuce varieties uh, were not suited to all areas in this country. Lettuce. There's more to it than meets the eye. Some of the varieties that came over, it was not too certain what some of them were. And the light in this country being different to the seed saving areas of America, which was California and those places where it was hot and dry, it was different. And, uh, and some of them, instead of uh, making good hearts, they, they made bousy plants and they were different. I'm pollinating them. On a nice morning like this, this requires doing two or three times a week. The pollen is dry, the, the atmosphere of this house is reasonably dry this morning, and the pollen is on the stamens, but uh, it needs shifting, and just a tap like this moves the pollen which falls under the stigma, and you get a pretty good set. Once you've done the pollinating right through, then you get hold of a water can or a hose pipe and just damp the floor down. Shut the house up for a few minutes, it creates a, a closer atmospheric conditions. That's just enough to start the pollen running and uh, it does assure you of a pretty good set. It's cost you nothing other than the labour. Belt tightening continued throughout 1942 and another new word crept into the language. Austerity. Clothes, already rationed, were now severely restricted in design. Even the number of pleats and seams were fixed, and lace was forbidden. And look at this dress I got down the town from that second hand. Some women took to hunting through second hand stalls in their search for the glamour of pre war fashion. Well, I'm pleased with it. Oh, well, we'll wait till we see it on. I'll give my final verdict then when the legs and all are done to match. Harry's saved every bit of wood ash he can to lavish on his tomatoes. It contains the potash necessary for healthy growth. Potash during the war was extremely difficult to get hold of and very costly, but a useful crop of tomatoes must have a goodly supply of potash and the potash prevents the greenback as we called it in tomatoes that's a green ring round the top of the tomato where the stalk is joined and that of course wouldn't ripen if the plants were lacking potash In May, the Board of Trade asked women to wear socks for the summer instead of stockings. Many preferred to give the impression of wearing stockings by painting their legs. All manner of recipes were tried, suntan lotion, gravy browning and even onion juice. The final touch needed a friend with an eyebrow pencil and a steady hand.
popular part of any wartime dance was the raffle for some coveted luxury. Tonight, Joyce has been lucky. She's won a banana, a fruit unseen by most people since the war began. But as ever, wartime ingenuity naturally found a substitute. Parsnip mashes up and, and it looks like banana when you've got it mashed up. And if you've got a little bit of banana essence left over from, you know, where you've used it before, uh, two or three drops of that into a parsnip. The parsnip already being nice and sweet, you can mix it up with a fork and make a imitation banana sandwich. But whatever you do, don't put in too much essence as it's very, very strong. I don't remember using it at the end of the war. Well, you couldn't get any more banana essence, and uh, they forget very quickly, children. They soon forgot the flavor of the banana. When the banana did come back in again, a lot of children didn't like it. A great day for Bristol and for the young people of Britain as the good ship Tilapa comes into dock with a cargo of eight million bananas, and advance unloading begins at once. And this shows you what six years without a banana has done to this young man. He's forgotten how to tackle the darn thing. Blue skies around the corner. Walk round the corner with me. Just round the corner you'll see those blue skies. There's nothing warmer Won't you feel happy to be Sharing the sunshine with me Under those blue skies This is the moment we've been waiting for They're dry and they're ready for picking now So pick them carefully Keep the string on them, whatever you do Otherwise that spoils the quality that's a bit warm in here. I'll put some more air on while you start picking. Picking tomatoes is like anything to do with tomatoes. It's a dirty job and it was never very popular. Your ads go black. There's a, a film comes off of the tomatoes which stains you and the foliage stains you even more. White fly left excretia on the leaves which mingled in with a natural bloom off of the leaves made it even worse. On your ads was stained something terrible. Ordinary soap wouldn't move it. One of the finest things to move it was to get a, a really ripe tomato and rub it in your hands like a bit of, of soap and, and it would all squeeze through your hands. It looked pretty revolting, but it was done immediately. You'd finish the job. It was a very good thing. If a garden was registered for food production, the bulk of what it grew had to be sent to official wholesalers. But there was always something for local callers. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Harry. you this afternoon? Ah, a little bird told me that you might have got some tomatoes. Well, I have got some. I'll let you have some, but I'm really supposed to send them all to the pool. Oh, there must be some that if aren't ready to go to the pool. come with me, then, we'll see what we can find you. I can soon squash a few if you want. Don't you? Oh, yeah, no problem. You think problem. that'll make it all right, do you? Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. That'll make it legal, will it? Oh, yes, because you can't send squashy things to the market. All right, well, we'll see what we can find you. Right. Mind the stack, won't you? It'd be nice if it will just have a few. About a pound and a half, that's what I'm... Oh, is it all right, then? Just you in an eight ounce. Yeah. Maybe the half it is, then. Yeah. Scales go down a bit heavy. Yeah, he's gone down. Good place to see. There you are. That's one and sixpence. Okay, then. You've got any old more nice goodies about? 
Well, we've got a cucumber here. This one's perfectly legal. It's been grown without any artificial heat. Right. Something we're allowed to do. Controlled oh. at temperance about. Uh, well, it looks nearly like a marrow. Well, it is very nearly. I'll put it in there then. I'll keep the bag okay. shut up on the way home. Right. Right, there you are then. That's all you're getting today. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah, it's just about right. Yeah, there won't be too much. No, yeah. it'll be just right. Thank you. So, can I come and have a look at it again I next week? I was just going to say, I expect to see you next week. All right. And, and no complaints about today. No, all right. Yeah. I'll make sure. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Wartime leaflets urged people to preserve tomatoes whenever they were plentiful. Although they lost some of their vitamins, they added flavour and a welcome touch of colour to recipes in the long winter months. One method was to bottle them in kilner jars. When you've got your jar full, uh, roll up a cloth and put it underneath, and then give your jar a good bang, and you'll be surprised how far your tomatoes will drop down. You'll probably get in another three or four. Um, try and do this if you can, because it stops so much shrinkage when you cook them. If you've got a spare jar of sort of assorted sizes, leave those and put them in with the rest because then you can carefully spoon them into the jars when they're cooked and fill your jars up again. Joyce, can you come and take these lids up for me, please? Yes, coming. And bring them back. Turn my gas out for me, Melissa. Thank you. Then you've got your brine to do. That's about two tablespoonfuls of salt to a pint, pint and a half of water. Also put in with this about a dessert spoonful of sugar because sugar and tomatoes marry quite well together. So make sure that they're really covered up if you can because they tend to discolour. They're a little bit riper than I would have actually liked them, but we just have to check and see how we get on. We use them for soup or can fry with them, but uh, I think they'll be a little bit too far gone. How long will they last like that? Well, we just have to watch them really more than anything because they're plenty ripe enough, like them a bit, a bit more underripe than that, really, in a way. But you have to have what you can get. And we put the lids on. We screw them up tight now. Make sure it's really tight and then give it a half turn back and then as it cools it'll shut itself up again. And then we'll try them again in the morning and make sure they're all right. During the summer of 1942, the war reached stalemate. The Germans lay siege to the Russians at Stalingrad, and the British confronted Rommel in the deserts of North Africa. On the home front, the last luxury disappeared when sweets came on ration. Although the sun shone, the country's mood was far from sunny. The BBC did its best to ease the loneliness of separation that so many now felt. Letter from home to the horses, from Vera Lynn and Fred Hartley. Dear boys, I've been working in the West End all this week, and using the tubes and buses a lot, I realised how well some of the girls are doing your job while you're away. I had a pleasant surprise when one of them, a girl on a 23 bus, recognised me. 
She must have seen a picture of me somewhere. She said she'll be listening in tonight, and so will her husband. Since I started singing about my man in this letter, a few dozen sweethearts and wives have proudly sent me snaps of the man in their lives. If you're lucky, you've got a girl like that. A girl who'll stick by you through all weathers and all your ups and downs. She'll stand by you. She'll take the kicks. She'll be proud to call you my man. Fish got to swim And birds got to fly I got to love one man till I die And help loving that man of mine You can't expect things to be as good as they were for you in peacetime, so try to make the best of things as you find them. When we look back now to years gone by to a dark and stormy We survived, come rain or shine, it turned out fine. Though the memories are fading of those days so long ago, So 